Good morning, artists. In last week's project, we talked about value, the lightness or darkness of a color, and did some practice with shading. Remember, shading is the key to making your artwork look more realistic in its ability to show that an object is three-dimensional. Here's an example of an artwork that we'll be working toward Let's go back to that value scale that we looked at from last week. And by the way, if you haven't done the black and white version of this, um, please go back and watch that other video so you can have that practice too. So here is an example again of that value scale. I'm trying to bring it into focus here because I'm seeing it's a little blurry. Um, so value is the lightness or darkness of a color. And you can see here that this is a value scale going from light to dark or dark to light, however you want to look at it going, you know, just little incremental steps darker until it gets to the other side. The same thing can happen when you're actually using color. So today we're going to explore how color can shift from light to dark or perhaps color even shifting from one color to the next. So let's do some practice here. I'm gonna move this value scale, or actually maybe I'll keep it right there while I'm working. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a coloring material and you can use um, crayons or colored pencils work really well. The only thing I would caution you against would be marker because they don't um, show value very gradually. There are some ways, some techniques to use, um, but today I'd like you to use crayons or colored pencils to show the value scale. So I'm going to start with crayons, so just some regular old crayons. And the first value scale that I want to make is going to start with this, I think it's like a red orange, and I want it to be as dark as possible, just like this black. So I'm going to start right here, and in order to make something really, really dark, it has everything to do with pressure. So I am pressing down on my crayon so hard so that I get that nice, rich and creamy coloring. Now, if you've been a student of mine in the past, you know that I use that term a lot. Basically, it means that you're pressing down hard or going over an area again and again until you get rid of all the white. So that's where you wanna start. So, so far, I have made my darkest value of this red-orange. Next, I'm gonna to start to pick up the pressure just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going a little bit lighter. You're starting to see little bits of white there. And then I'm gonna go even lighter. Now my value scale is gonna be a lot shorter than this one up here. And I'm gonna go lighter. So it's just very gradual. If you start to notice a line, so for example, I'm gonna do this, make it really light and then darker here. If you start to notice a line where there's a definite shift, just come back and feather it in, so go a little bit lighter. And I'm gonna keep on going lighter, lighter until I'm barely even touching the paper. All right. And then I can come back and you know fix any areas of the light to dark. So right now I'm noticing it's a little bit darker in there because of that example I was just doing. So I can kind of try to help that out a little bit. So dark to light, okay, using a crayon. I will tell you that my favorite uh, supply to use during this is actually colored pencil, um, but I wanted to show you that crayons also work. Um, so let's say that you wanted to do a value scale, but you also wanted to go um, into another color. So now I've gone dark to light with my red orange. Now I'm going to make a value scale headed in the opposite direction. And I've got this kind of orangey yellow color, um, yep, yeah, yellow orange. Um, and I'm going to start at this end and I'm gonna make it as dark as possible. So yeah, again, rich and creamy coloring, right? And then I'm just going to, again, pick up pressure. So I'm going a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. I may have gone a little bit far away from my other one. I've got a long ways to go. So I'm gonna make that little section of dark a little bit darker here. And then go lighter, 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 lighter until I am just barely, again, touching the paper, and then I can overlap the colors. So 
So you want to work on getting them to kind of blend into one another so that it makes an easy transition. So I might need to bring this one back and just kind of overlap a little bit. So you get this nice, smooth transition and it looks really cool. So anyway, just a little practice before we start on our actual artwork. So let's do that. Um, what we're gonna do today, once again, is we'll need a piece of white paper and a straight edge. You can use even the back of the paper that you used last week. Um, that way you can conserve your drawing paper. And you're gonna need a straight edge. So remember from last week, it can be a ruler, but if you don't have one, you can use you know anything that you can find. So for example, I have this folder, remote students, that's you guys. Um, and you can use a straight edge just like this to trace instead if you don't have a ruler on hand. So here comes my first line. I'm just gonna create again some lines intersecting just to you know show some different areas where I can work into these value scales. I think maybe here and as soon as I'm happy with the design, I'm just gonna stop and I'm gonna start doing my shading. Now, I have one that I've been working on already, um, so I'm just gonna switch to that one we saw at the beginning of the video. So here it is. And so you can see my lines moving in different directions. Now, I'm gonna work with colored pencils this time. Um, and again, if you have crayons on hand and that's all you have, it works just the same. Um, so feel free to use those. I am gonna start out, not a lot of my colored pencils are very sharp at this point. So I think I'll start out with this green, okay? And I'm gonna start in the beginning, um, just going from light to dark here. I think I'll start right here in the corner, although now that I'm looking at it, I don't really wanna do a green because it's so close to this guy. So maybe I will, you know what, this one's really sharp right here and it's a pink. So I'm gonna start with that. So what I'm gonna do in the center here is I'm gonna press down super duper hard and get that really dark value of pink. And I'm gonna do kind of a large swath or a large area in that really dark solid color. So again, getting rid of all the white, putting down a lot of pressure, okay? And now I'm gonna start to pick up my pressure. Sorry about the jiggle of the of the camera while I'm coloring, unavoidable. All right, so now I've gone a little bit lighter. You can see a little bit more white incorporated there. Now I'm gonna do even more. Lighter, lighter. And I'm just kind of coloring in the shape that I've chosen here. I'm going in all one direction right now. We may change direction at some point. I notice I did it on this one. Do you see how there's like lines going this way and then I made lines going this way? Then this bottom one is actually coloring in a different direction. So you can switch directions. Just do it, you know, purposefully or mindfully. Do it on purpose, not just kind of on accident. All right, now when I get to this edge, I'm gonna kind of darken it because I want it to look different than the shape that's gonna be next to it. So I'm just gonna make a kind of a line all the way through and again, just continue to work with my value. I'm starting to go a lot lighter now. And I'm gonna darken up that edge again so I know where it is. And again, I'm just barely touching the paper and it kind of fades to nothing, fades to white. Now I notice, I don't know if you could see it um, on the camera here, but um, there's a little bit of an edge there that I just kind of want to get rid of, so I'm going to come back and just feather it out. Now I think I'm a little bit happier with that. And there's my dark to light with pink. All right, now as I said, you can go from one color to another. So you'll notice I went from this color to here. It's sort of like a kind of a grayish violet to this darker maroon. Um, so it's kind of fun to play around not only with different colors in that single gradation or um, value scale, but also to fade from one color to another. So I'm gonna show you how that works right now. Um, I should have sharpened my pencils before all this if I was really good, but I totally didn't think of it. So I'm gonna do one right here because it's kind of small. And I'm gonna start out in the corner 
going really, really dark once again. I almost always start out on the dark end of the spectrum. I feel like that's easier. If you want to try it the other way though, I'd love to know, you know, how successful it is. All right, so I'm gonna keep on going and I'm just gonna go really light now, hardly touching the paper. And I'm gonna leave it right about there. And I'm gonna go grab my other color. So I'm gonna do a blue. And I'm gonna start out at this edge, really pressing down hard. And I'm kind of just making my edge look sort of rough. You know, it's not in a straight line. I can come back and clean that up like I did here um, later if I'd like, or I can leave it rough, it's totally up to you. All right, now I'm gonna to start to fade. So I'm gonna go a little bit lighter. And a little bit lighter. I'm gonna to have to come back and tweak, tweak it a little bit, I noticed. And then I'm just gonna overlap the colors a little bit. If any of you um, have ever worked with oil pastels, um, and I know many of you have with me, this is a really amazing thing to do with oil pastels um, using then incorporating white. Um, so if you find that you have a problem area where like it's just not fading fast enough, you can always use an eraser. And I know a lot of students are like, well, wait a minute, erasers don't work on colored pencils. They actually do in a lot of, in a lot of circumstances. Um, they won't erase it completely, but they will alter it slightly. So you'll notice that I'm just coming back and I'm using the eraser to take away a little bit of value. And it almost makes it kind of like hazier too. I can even come back here, maybe even work in a different direction. And it does a really good job of, it's called the reduction method in a lot of, um, in a lot of um, circles. So it's taking away and that's why it's the reduction. Okay, so you're actually taking color away with the eraser. All right, so I'm a lot happier with that now that I just did that. Um, and I can come back to it and I could even add in like a darker blue right here if I wanted to. Um, looking to see if I have one, I don't, but um, I could come back and like I said, I could clean up the edge. So if I want that to look straighter, I would just come back and I'd color in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go up and down this time. And again, press down hard. And I wanna make the edge nice and strong, nice and straight. So I'm pressing down. And now I've gone a little bit, there we go. And I'm gonna just kind of feather it out again. I like to come back and work in the other direction because I feel like it makes the fading stronger. Oh, I'm really liking that now that I'm doing that. Now I wanna come back and do that with my red too. I mean, honestly, a practice like this, I could spend hours just developing these values because I think it's really kind of relaxing, fun. You know, you sort of get into the zone of creating. All right, so again, I could have you here all day long watching me color this, but that would not be very fun for you. So what I want you to do next is to try this on your own. Um, and when you're finished, snap a photo of your artwork, upload it to Seesaw or send it to me through email. Um, you guys have been doing a wonderful job um, and I hope you have fun with it. You know, play around with different color combinations and um, see what you come up with. Have a great day everyone and I will be back with another project next week. Take care.